Hey everyone, welcome to Break It Yourself. Today, this is the third installment, year number three of Projection Mapping My Home. I've got three major updates, a bunch of small little updates. First, let's recap projection mapping. So you wanna get into projection mapping, what do you need? We're gonna need a projector and you're gonna need a computer and you're gonna have to have some software to do the designing and editing so that you can project onto your house. There are complete setups. I believe Lightform is the one that kinda is a one-stop shop for everything. And then you've got a lot of different stuff in between. I would suggest go out there and get yourself a projector. The brighter, the better. And then you're also gonna be looking for a throw ratio or the distance really from the house and the size that you wanna be projecting on. Lots of lumens, the most lumens that you can afford. And then kind of keep in mind that if your house is a blank white surface, that's gonna be the best thing to project on. And then kind of going down from there, I've got this like pinkish reddish brick, which is horrific to project onto, just so you know that. Throw ratio, if your throw ratio is one to one, then if your house is 20 feet wide, then your projector is gonna to need to be 20 feet back. If it is less than one, then you can be closer than 20 feet. And if it's greater than one, you need to be further away than that 20 feet. Just to kind of give you an idea, there's an awesome calculator out there. I'll link that below. It has almost every projector you could think of. You can put the projector in there and then you can kind of work with your distances to see if it will work. But again, I'm gonna reiterate, I think the more lumens, the better. I don't necessarily think you need higher resolution. I'm doing 1080p which seems to work fine. I don't think you need to go out there and do 4K, but it depends on your application. So that's kind of a brief, very, very brief overview of projection mapping. I'm gonna also link to a tutorial below on how to map in After Effects. That's what I do. That's how I learned. Um, I had already had some experience with After Effects. I think that it's a very steep learning curve if you're not into these types of programs, if you've never done After Effects before. I would look around, um, take a look at Mad Mapper. I think that's one that's popular with some other people, but really you can map with a lot of different programs as simple as Paint. I don't think you're gonna get great results, but theoretically you could do it. PowerPoint, you could do that as well. And then it goes all the way up to some really high-end software as well. So I use After Effects. There's tons of tutorials online. I'll link to the one that I followed, which is absolutely excellent. Now, let's get into my three main updates. So year one, we just mapped and I did a projection of a cartoon, which was pretty terrible. It was the nativity story, the classic Christmas story. Year two, because my brick is horrible to project onto, I added these screens, which you should be able to see here. I don't love these things at all, but it gives me a white surface to project onto and it worked well last year. And I ended up using that again this year. Three major changes. One, I added pixels on my roof line and my gutter line and also in another location that you'll see. Just wanted to scratch the surface of adding some lights as well and incorporate them into the show and then kind of have them be mostly static in between shows. So I actually started this process and I would suggest to you if you're doing the same as early as possible. I started this in June of 2021 and just kind of slowly worked, especially because I have a baby now. I just slowly worked on this stuff throughout the year and I uh, was ready to go for Christmas. The other thing that I added, major change, is a button that runs the show. Last year and the year before, it was just on a schedule using Falcon Pie Player. I'll link to that below as well. I, I just added a schedule top and bottom of every hour and it would just play my show then. I noticed a few things. One, the show would play sometimes when no one was here. So I was getting wear and tear on the winch and the screens, which if you wanna see more about that, check out my video from last year. Hey baby. What was that? <laughs> the worst case scenario just happened. I didn't wanna get all that wear and tear. I really only wanted to run the show if someone was here. Additionally, running at the top and bottom of every hour, we could have some pretty heavy traffic build up um, in anticipation for the show. And then some people would be kind of down the street. They wouldn't be able to see it very well. So I just figured, hey, let's add a button. When you're here, you press it, you watch it on your own time, and it's not gonna run if someone's not here. 
And then the third major change is the actual animations themselves. So I went back to Upwork like I did last year and I got somebody to completely reanimate the Christmas story for me. I did it using some Adobe products three years ago and uh, my friends so kindly called it South Park Christmas. It was okay, I thought I did a pretty good job for what I knew and, and uh, the capabilities that I had, but I went out and got someone who did a much better job reanimating the show for me. So those are the three major changes. There's a bunch of little changes as well, but those are the three major ones. There's some, some minor things that I wanna get into now. So last year, uh, last year I had the screen set up with Falcon Pie Player, so I had a Raspberry Pi sitting next to the projector running everything that worked well i had a relay a smart things relay that was controlling the winch and doing the screens the problem was there was latency between the falcon pie player and the smart things it could be half a second it could be three seconds i really needed a consistent time every time because my projection would come down slowly across the house and I wanted the screens to match that every time. And it really only matched it maybe like one out of three times. So I eliminated the smart things and I did everything in Falcon Pie Player. So I added a lot of Raspberry Pis this year. I've got a Raspberry Pi at my projector. I've got a master inside. I've got a remote at the button and I've also got a remote at the winch. So now the master is running through a playlist and it'll say, hey, winch you turn on and it sends a command to the remote Raspberry Pi at the winch and then it in turn has a little relay board that turns on or off the winch and it's spot on pretty much every time. I don't think it's been off ever. Additionally, I've got a Raspberry Pi Zero out at the button which I want people to press to run the show and so I set up with the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi Zero um, just a simple momentary switch essentially is what it is so you press the button and it's like touching the two pins together that says hey let's start a playlist so that sends a command to the master to start the playlist overall it starts playing the video on the projector it starts the lights and everything and then it goes through the show as normal with the screens and whatnot now i would like going forward into 2022 i really want to eliminate the screens they make me nervous they are a pretty big headache um the winch is very strong it's like a 2500 pound dc winch and that makes me nervous um if something were to go wrong it could rip all the screens off of the house <laughs> and i really would like to eliminate it so i'm going to be looking for as many lumens as i can afford in 2022 i think i'm going to go on the refurb market and look for a commercial projector to really get the brightness onto the house so i can see vivid colors even on the brick without the screens the screens have worked excellent for the past two years but it does feel like something's gonna fail and I, I it's just something that if I could eliminate it then I can eliminate uh, the worry of some type of failure with the winch or the screens or the limit switches that I have another small change is that I've recently gotten into home assistant and I know I'm way late to the game, but one of the things that I added was just a simple counter in Home Assistant to say, hey, how many times has the show actually played? So I can pull this up and just show you. Um, so on my main screen on Home Assistant right now, my total counter, so this is December 23rd, my total counter is at 130. The show has played 130 times. Last night alone, it played eight times. So I think I can show this to you here. Just a really simple, counter that I have going on there. Um, I've enjoyed that just to be able to see, you know, are people watching? And it turns out that they actually are. So we'll see what the total count gets up to. That's something that I'll update on Instagram at the end of the season. So if you want to keep up with that, go ahead and, uh, or somewhere, check out my Instagram. Okay. Also, a lot of people have asked for tutorials. I am not going to beat a dead horse. I will link to all the tutorials that I used and I will commit at some point in 2022 to doing some tutorials on the button specifically and the winch as well. Mainly I'm using GPIOs and uh, relays and then a momentary switch out for my button. 
I'll try to go a little more in depth in those videos. This is just my broad overview update video of, hey, this is what I changed in 2021. And then in 2022, I'll do some t tutorials for you guys. I know I haven't done that in the past, mainly because the stuff that I was doing, I was just copying what other people have done. Now I feel like I've branched out a little bit more. Um, I'm not gonna touch on the pixels because there are tons and tons and tons of videos especially Candace Spader Christmas. I think his name is Jeff. Check that out if you want to even get into starting to do LED pixels. He is basically what I followed. Um, this might be Greek to you, but I also got an F48 board and that's how I'm running just the simple pixels on my roof and some pixels around the button, as you'll see like in some B-roll and stuff. Next year, I have hopes of wrapping the two trees in pixels as well, incorporating those, and also adding some type of LED matrix, which will be my new sign for like, tune your radi radio to 87.9. And also, that, that reminds me, another really small um, change that I made this year was that the audio off the Raspberry Pi is pretty terrible, so I added a little USB, I believe it's like an audio card. So it's USB to 3.5 millimeter jack and then that goes to the FM transmitter and I've noticed a lot cleaner audio as well. So though that's the recap for this year. I will have some content coming in 2022. So stick around, subscribe, like this video as well. Thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself as always. If you wanna see the full video of the new show, which I also condensed a little bit. I thought 10 minutes was just too long. I didn't want people sitting out here for 10 minutes, especially if they have kids and stuff. I'd really love to get it down to like four minutes, but I managed six to seven minutes this year. So uh, I will link that video as well somewhere. So if you want to see the whole video for 2021, go ahead and check that out again. Thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. Merry Christmas, and we will see you next time.